What is life and how is life distributed throughout the universe? Are we alone in this universe? Are we the only civilization of beings who have a similar intelligence, consciousness, creativity, and imagination? And are there any other civilizations perhaps more advanced in science, technology, philosophy, and ethics? Hello and welcome to Matter and Beyond. I'm your host, Mary Lynn Schiavi. If the answer to these questions is that we are in fact alone on this blue planet hurtling through space, to some it seems almost illogical, and it looks like there's an awful lot of wasted space. So the search for intelligent life in the universe continues. In this program, we're going to hear about the research conducted by the NASA Ames Research Center. Dr. Virginia Gulick is a researcher at the NASA Ames Research Center. As a trained geologist, Virginia Gulick analyzes images looking for signs of water. Her interest, like many others, started when Viking landers reached Mars. Well, I've always been kind of interested in space science, and especially when I was a, a little girl and saw the um, the, the Viking landers land on Mars, and I saw all these neat pictures, and so I got really interested in it um, when I was actually quite young. And then when I went to um, college, I was really interested in geology. I never really had it before, and I really, really liked it. Dr. Virginia Gulick is the high-resolution imaging scientist experiment, high-rise education, and public outreach coordinator at NASA Ames Research Center. Launched in August 2005, HiRISE is flying on board the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and is continually sending images back to Earth for analysis. I'm a, I'm a planetary geologist here at NASA Ames, and um, I work mostly uh, with Mars geology right now. And my what I'm doing right now is I'm working on a um, I'm a science team member of the, of the high rise. Mars and Earth are similar in a variety of ways, which is why research into life on Mars is important. And my postdoc, Alex Watts, and I are working on targeting uh, the images as we speak. And when we go back for this interview, we'll be going back and finishing our targeting cycle. Um, each of the team members um, has to take um, a, a targeting cycle where they, they do, they plan the images, and they um, say where we're going to be imaging. And, uh, and then the camera will image them in a couple weeks. Because of the complexity of searching for life on Mars, Dr. Gulick collaborates with other team members within NASA and beyond NASA as well. And um, so there's various team members uh, across the United States and in Europe. There's about a dozen or so of us, probably about 16 now. And um, we all work on the science team. We all help target, and we all have our specialties. I do um, what's called fluvial and hydrothermal um, science. Uh. After targeting high rise, Record images from those specific locations are sent to NASA for analysis. So what that deals with is, is looking at the, the valleys and the channels on Mars and trying to get the key areas of those locations um, that, um, that might have had the best chance for, for water or just for evidence for water. The search area currently includes hydrothermal areas seeking locations that have water and thermal energy at the same time. These are areas that, that um, are volcanic or um, impact that might have had water going through the, the, uh, beneath the ground for long periods of time, and so I try to target those areas too. Development and sustenance of forms of life that we are familiar with require water. However, regardless of the form, any kind of life would also require energy. In, in order to have um, possibility for life, you need to have some kind of en energy source. And Mars has lots of evidence for volcanoes, large volcanoes and large impact craters, which can generate an energy source. On Earth, even in the depths of the ocean and the outermost regions that are freezing, such as the poles, there is life. This fact gives the NASA team hope that they will find life on Mars as well. And as we know on Earth, wherever we uh, find water, 
we find life. Even very far down, deep in the subsurface, two miles down, there's life in these uh, basalt aquifers. And we, we would suppose if there was life way down there on Earth, that we, there might have been life at one time, or even possibly presently, on Mars beneath the surface. Not only at the surface, but the underground water near the volcanic areas are also considered in the search for life. Especially where you have these thermal sources uh, and then water, groundwater, in the presence of, of these sources. And that those are the most likely areas for life. Rocks from Mars, which are found on Earth, are also studied. One such possibility excited the world during the Clinton administration. Uh, I think it was 1996, if I recall correctly. There was um, a meteorite that, that uh, they found on Earth in Antarctica, and it had carbonate uh, uh, nodules in it that people thought might have been uh, from Mars. And they found, since then, they found that that probably isn't the case, but it still excited everybody as the possibility that there could have been life on Mars. Techniques developed at NASA for Mars have a wide range of applications within the solar system and beyond. And studying water is, uh, is a very interesting um, goal and a lot of people are, are trying to find water in, elsewhere in the solar system. <laughs>